let's get back to the ballot fraud. While researching my position for the discussion I mentioned earlier, I went in search of sample ballots for the 2020 election. I found a collection of them on the website Ballotpedia. I was surprised when I saw the first ballot listed for the, the state of Alabama had a mistake in it. Do you see the difference between this ballot and the one from Tennessee? In Tennessee, the ballot clearly states that the individual is voting for electors for, while the Alabama ballot claims they are voting for the president and vice president. It's not true. The state of Alabama is lying to their citizens, claiming they are voting for an office that they are not actually voting for. That makes their actions fraud, which the legal dictionary defines as a false representation of a matter of fact, whether by words or by conduct, by false or misleading allegations, or by concealment of what should have been disclosed, that deceives and is intended to deceive another so that the individual will act upon it to her or his legal injury. Some may ask what the legal injury a citizen of Alabama, or any state for that matter, may receive from this deception. Well, they may give up their right to state representation in the election of the president under the false belief that they are voting for the office directly. They may come to believe the office of president represents the people rather than the states due to the false belief that they voted for the person in office rather than their state doing so. I'm sure if I spent more time in this, I could find additional legal injury that comes from this fraud. Once I saw what I thought was a mistake by Alabama, I decided to do more research. I was shocked by what I found out. Of the 50 states in the union, I could only confirm 13, that's 26%, had non-fraudulent ballots. In one of those states, Louisiana, I found that the state did mention that the people were voting for electors, but it was in a, a note in the heading and somewhat misleading. I found 34 states, that's 68%, that had fraudulent ballots. And I could not find the presidential ballots for three states, Connecticut, Delaware, or Oklahoma. That means that at least two-thirds of our states committed fraud in the 2020 presidential election, and probably other elections as well. That is a number I hope you find as shocking as I do.